You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. Next, featuring intimate and in depth interviews with Black Hollywood's next edition of Stars and Influencers. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live next. Hey, you know that voice? That's Rick Ross. Foreclosure, right? That's the name of the song? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's me, Megan Thomas, at Meg Scoop on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Periscope. And I. I was gonna be like, who's this? You know, because you're so beautiful. We do this so much. We do, we do this so much. How are you, pretty girl? Hello, I'm Courtney Tezno. Keep in touch with me at Tezno's on Twitter and Instagram, and use that hashtag BHL next throughout our show. And you are watching Black Hollywood Live next. We always talk about who's up and coming, who's hot, who you need to know. Yes. And this week is no different. We got another handsome gentleman over here in the building with us. You've seen him on Sons of Anarchy, and you can catch him now on Hulu's Hot Wives of Las Vegas. Yes. Give it up for LaMonica Garrett. Woo-hoo. Yes! LaMonica's in the house. Good lighting in here. Good lighting. That's, the <laughs> is with the, that's all that's happening. Yes. This is your selfie light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that selfie light. We won't judge you. When you guys were out doing your stuff, I was in here adjusting my selfie lights. <laughs> Yeah, we good now. It's, it looks good on you. Yeah, it thank does. You. I appreciate yes, it. yes, yes. So let's talk about um, a couple of. Uh, well, actually, I want to do an icebreaker with you because I heard that you are a big comic book fan. Yeah. So wait, so wait, tell me about this though. Our, so every Wednesday is like New Comic Book Day or something. Okay. Yeah. No, is it? I mean, I don't. I don't know the whole comic book genre. Like, what's your favorite DC Marvel? Like DC. what? DC. I'm more DC. I'm more Green Lantern, John Stewart, okay. uh, Kyle Rayner, Guy Gardner. Yeah, you know, I don't know any stuff. of this. I don't know any like... of it. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in the DC world. But Our I, producer I like Alexis universes. knows. Okay, I like both universes. Okay, so we're gonna do a little trivia for you. All right, let's oh, wow. go. Let's see how okay. good your uh, comic book stuff is. Well, some of these are easy, I think. Okay. Which hero sometimes goes by the nickname Scarlet Speedster? Is it Superman, The Flash, or Red Tornado? Red Tornado. Nah, it's The Flash. Flash, Scarlet Speedster? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, so who has a butler by the name of Edwin Jarvis? Is it Batman, Green Arrow, or Iron Man? Iron Man. Yeah! Okay, see, you know that. Yeah. That took me a second. I didn't realize Jarvis's name was Edwin Jarvis. Yeah. I thought it was just Jarvis. Very proper. Yeah. I know, right? Okay. Okay. Who killed Charles Xavier in Avengers vs. X-Men? Was it Magneto, Cyclops, or Legion? Mmm, I might have to say Magneto. No, it's Cyclops! No. Cyclops. C- yeah. Cyclops? Avengers vs. X-Men in that one. Huh, okay. Okay, this one you're going to get. Okay, over which eye does Nick Ferry wear his patch, left or right? Right. No! It's left! Who, it's, it's, it's the camera! <laughs> We'll give you that one. We'll give, okay. you that. we'll give you that one. Yeah, Nick Fury. Okay, we'll give you that. These are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Which villain possessed the Infinity Gems, Galactus or Thanos? The Infinity and Thanos. Yeah! Yeah. Wow, how do you know that? Well, it's some of these are <laughs> like just common knowledge, and some of them like uh, Scarlet. I, I, okay. I know. Um, See, all of these are hard for me. All right. They definitely are. Okay, so uh, with, what does the DC... Wait, hold on. What does the DC and DC Comics stand for? Is it Dangerous Comics or Detective Comics? Detective Comics. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You got it. I didn't know that at all. I better get that one. Yeah. <laughs> You, so you, got, you got three out of the six, right? I like your questions. You <laughs> ask me the wrong ones. Yeah. We got to stick over here on this. Oh, right. no. Well, let's talk about what's up in casting yes. news. Let's talk about, okay, so did you guys hear about Idris Elba being called Too Street to play James Bond? Yeah. yeah. He yeah. had a really, really classy response for Anthony Horowitz, who is uh, who wrote the new James Bond novel. Uh, Anthony said that he felt that Idris was a little too street because he's played roles like Luther um, on the show. For oh, He played John Luther on the show Luther, which is a British show. Mm-hmm. And he just said he's too street to be the next James Bond. But to me, I'm like, he's an actor. Like, yeah. yeah. He's getting he act. played Mandela. Yes. Man. He can adapt. Yeah, and then Mandela's not street. So right, right, right. So he can figure it out. And he gave, he gave a really good response. Um, this was this is what uh, Idris Elba posted on his Instagram. He said, always keep smiling. It takes no energy and never hurts. Learn that from the street. Boom. Ah, got it. You do it, Idris. I love this. I would love to see him as James Bond. I would, too. Yeah. Look at this picture. He's so dapper. I know. That's James Bond right he there. He really is. And the James Bonds, like, they started out real, like, you know, shaking, not stirred. Real, 
you know, just real crisp and clean. And Daniel Craig kind of dirtied it up a little right, bit. Right. Yeah. He's getting beat up. Why not have the next step be a more edgy James Bond? Right. It doesn't have to be street to be edgy. Right. You know what I mean? Has it ever happened to you? Has someone ever said, like, oh, you're a little too thuggish? Well, no, you know what I get black. all the time is I want to go for the edgier roles, mm-hmm. and they look at me like, you're the you're the lawyer. <laughs> you're the clean cut <laughs> one. Clean. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't like putting suits on. I want to be a drug dealer. Yeah, let me dirty it up a little bit. They see me as the love interest, the lawyer, the detective, the... That's what I get. Right, right, right. So, yeah. You got to get that scruff need, out yeah, to get, get the... Yeah, got to get the scruff going and keep it going. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. We, uh, well, hopefully we can see you in the new Straight Outta Compton sequel. Right. Uh, some of the cast is set, and this, this keeps coming up because this movie has been in the news. It keeps continuing to be in the news. Yes. So uh, we just found out that there's a few people that have been cast to play. One is Azad Arnott, who will play Daz Dillinger, who is actually one of the executive producers of this. And he's the guy in the front with the blue... With the, the plaid blue, shirt yeah, on. Yeah, with the plaid shirt. Okay. And that's actually Daz Dillinger's son. So his son is like... Awesome. I feel like everybody's son, that's like the hood thing now. Your son will play you in the biopic. Got it, yeah. Keep right. it all in the business. Everybody right. got it in their keep. And yeah. then also... Um, uh, Oh, the other big thing is that Dr. Dre's son will be playing him in this biopic. For sure, yes. I'm excited Curtis, about that yeah, one. Curtis but mm. the last person that played Dr. Dre in Straight Outta Compton was phenomenal. Yes. Yeah, that yeah, whole cast was, they was were fantastic. Great. Yes. Yes. Right, right. They didn't skip a beat. No, they didn't. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Well, yes. they set the bar pretty high, so you know how that goes. Do you guys think that Must these deliver. guys look like who they're supposed to be? Obviously, to the right or to the left side. Right side, I guess. He's playing this, Daz? So, yeah, he's playing Daz. He looks like more corrupt to me. Right. No, corrupt is over here on the left. Right um, here? Yeah. I can see that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. And then behind him, of course, that's Dr. Dre. I love, yeah, that one is, that one I see. You see Suge Knight, you see guess. Tupac? Yeah, that's Suge. <laughs> we get, we get Suge. Bandana. Yeah. Pac. Looks like Tupac. But you know what? I love the last Pac. The look, look-wise, he right, really nailed right, it. Right, right, I know a couple of dudes that really look like Pac. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, yeah. See, he looks yeah, like yeah, Pac yeah, yeah. Right That's there. a great one. That's a great one. Yeah. That's Daz. He might be a little too tall to be Pac, though. Daz Dillinger. Right, right. Oh, so I'm interested to see how this goes. Uh, it's, it's set to tape, but right now, these guys were in the studio with Daz Dillinger to kind of just get their rapport together, and I think they were getting a feel for the vibe when um, Tupac... Uh, Daz and Suge were in the studio to make Ambitions as a writer and I ain't mad at you and they did those in 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so they were recreating that. I was like, that's dope. I was about to say, what, awesome. what, what's the uh, the time frame they're going from? I guess around... From, around that time yeah, where yeah, Ambitions... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a great time in hip-hop. Oh, right. yeah. Man, that was a good time in rap. What's your favorite Tupac song? Pain. Uh, so Many Tears. Oh, I love that one. Uh... It ain't easy. Like, I got, mm-hmm. you know, the All Eyes on Me was off the chain, right. but, like, Me Against the World, that whole album was phenomenal. Him on the Juice soundtrack, right. the Bump the Rim soundtrack, right, 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 right. The Pain. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, like, that pain came when you could only buy the cassette. <laughs> you bought the CD, it wasn't on the CD. They right, wanted right. you to buy the tape. But right. I'm like, I'm getting the tape. Pain's on, you know, on, right. on the tape. I gotta get the tape. Oh, yes. Oh, Tupac. Love it. Love Definitely. It. Okay, so while we're talking about music, let's head over and talk about some fresh beats. Now, okay. this one is nothing like Straight Outta Compton. It's actually a new <laughs> Selena Gomez song, and it's called Same Old Love. But before we listen to that song, let's take a look at this photo that she posted. She actually is posing nude for her new album called Revival, and it, we're definitely seeing a more racy side of her. So we'll give them a second to pull that one up. Selena, huh? Selena Gomez, yeah. So she mm-hmm. stripped down, and she was saying she was kind of giving like a mod feel, like a, she wants to go back to like the 70s or like I think the 60s feel. But I okay. like it. And recently in an interview, she, yeah, it really is. So we're going to go ahead and listen to her song called Same Old Love. Let's see what we think about it. Really break that lady, mold. Yeah. yeah, it really is. I but think a lot of people in that world do, you know, they feel like people see them in that image. Mm-hmm. So they go the Miley Cyrus route. So oh, I yeah. gotta do anything for shock value to get right. a, get you away from thinking that mm-hmm. young Hannah Montana right. Right. right on stage naked. <laughs> right, right. No, no she's more. another level. She's yeah, another she, level. I think 
Celine is kind of like gradually giving it to us, which I appreciate right, right. because yeah. it takes a minute when you're going through that coming of age phase. So right. I'm happy to see she's doing it. She just now called out all the haters who are body shaming her right. with this one. So I'm just like, she's being yeah. really grown. We'll let her evolve and hopefully that album will be a good one. Revival. Definitely. Okay, so let's talk about some fashion. Are you into fashion at all? Mm. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> T-shirt, jeans. Shoes. That's fashionable. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I'm right. James Dean, I guess. The James <laughs> Dean it's person. your personal style, right? Yeah, okay, true. so the reason we're talking about it is because obviously right now it's New York Fashion Week. So, like, there's so many new trends coming out mm-hmm. on the runway. And today they actually announced that H&M is partnering with Balmain. Uh, you know the brand that like a lot of the celebs are uh, right. rocking. It's really, really expensive. So now they're going to be at H and M with their brands. And here's a few I want you to check out for men's style. So that one is like a hundred dollars for this coat. Would you wear that? No. <laughs> not my style. Let's, let's Would you wear thing. that? No. <laughs> you can't. You got to get something. To Would you wear that? The pants. I can't breathe in them. I, I'm so <laughs> can't wear those right now. Well, they got a zipper to relieve some of the tension at the you know, I got and, big legs. That's not going to work. And the knee area. You, I think it's edgy. Those I like. I'm not I'm mad normal. at them. This one reminds me of this MJ Thriller. thriller. Would yeah. you like this? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, it's too hot in LA to wear most it's of these way things. Way too hot. I'm <laughs> right, right. What it feels like outside. Now right this now. one kind of shocked me. This one is something I would see us wear, like a, more of a jumpsuit. But would a guy wear this? Would you ever wear rock something like that? Time and the place. Okay. Maybe. Right. I right. can't see it. Go kart. Go karting. Hey. <laughs> you be super fly in this no. two hundred dollar go kart right. outfit. Right. Right. And then there's some shoes that they're like going to be selling. You like those? Yeah, I like those. Okay, okay. well, H&M, they're going to be having those out soon. It ranges from like 100 to $200, which is a little on the higher end, but they're partnering with a really big designer. So yeah. I yeah, think his name yeah. is um, Oliver Roos- Roos- Roosting. Yeah. Yes. Get it. Yeah. Yes. What's your football season looking like? Who's going to win this season? Uh, you know what? I think... I think the Packers might make some noise. Jordy Nelson got hurt, but okay. I, you know you got Aaron Rodgers. I think the Seahawks are going to take a step back. Okay. The uh, Cam Chancellor, that whole holdout right now, that's that's not looking good for him. Uh, if I had to call a Super Bowl, I would think the Patriots are probably going to be back. It's hard, uh. it's hard to bet against them. I mean, Brady, you see him last night. They killed right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> and probably the Packers. Probably, yeah, Packers, uh, Patriots. Okay, Packers, Patriots. We'll see yeah. what happens with that. But I like to see who, who's on, like, the uprise. I like, I love yeah. the underdog for some I reason. I like new teams. Unless yeah. the 49ers are out of it, I want to see someone new, like, you know, Take make it. some headway. Why are you a 49ers versus a Raiders fan? I grew up 10 minutes from Candlestick. Ah, okay. So okay. I was named after a Raider. Okay. Which is weird. You know, when I see Raider fans like, LaMonica, they're a LaMonica mad bomber. I'm like, damn, I'm yes. a 49er fan. <laughs> wait, wait. Stop all that. But uh, do you feel like you have to live up to that name? It was uh, actually Daryl. Daryl LaMonica. Daryl yeah. LaMonica. You feel like you have to live up to that well, name? When I played football, it was a little, you know, a little bit more pressure on me. And I was uh-huh. a quarterback growing up, and then I switched over to defense, so it kind of went away from it. But yeah. Did you ever meet him? I haven't met. I met Joe Montana. That's okay. my favorite Ooh, player. But okay. I never met Daryl LaMonica. That'd be I know. You're named after. Why? So who named you? Your dad or your mom? After B- they said both. They just love really? the name. Yeah. Yeah. They love the dope. name. So, I mean, it got me, you know, some fights. Toughed me up when I was little. <laughs> Backed me into a couple corners. But, it, you know, it toughed me up. When I got older, I learned to appreciate it and embrace yeah. it. And it is what it is. Right. I mean, it's a football legend. That's an honor. Yeah. So, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, let, let us know what you guys think about football. Well, you can go to DraftKings.com because they crown more millionaires than any other one-week fantasy football sports site anywhere. Mm-hmm. So uh, last season, I think there were $10 million in prizes up for grabs, including $2 million for the first prize and $1 million for the second prize. I'll take either one of those. Right. So if you guys want to check that out, go to DraftKings.com. It, this isn't fantasy as usual. Welcome to the big time. So make sure you go to DraftKings.com, and you can use our promo code, which is BLACK. And you can play for a free shot at the $2 million prize. And the one-week millionaire maker, again, that is the code BLACK. Use that code. Use the code for free entry now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. Make sure you guys go. You going to go? I'm going to go. Okay. I'm going to use the code, too. <laughs> you better use you the better code. Use it. You better use it. You better use it for free. <laughs> that that means you better give us code. a cut of this $2 right. million that you win, LaMonica. But well, what about the money? If I lose the money, y'all going to give me a cut? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> It's a one-way street. This works both ways. Yeah, one-way we street. Can't do one that one. <laughs> well, let's talk about you. Let's mm-hmm. get into some of your business. I know you. You know, as we're talking, you're a San Francisco 49ers fan. So you were born in San Fran, right? Yeah. You were yeah. raised in the Bay. What was that like growing up there? It was great. It was uh, a lot of overcast. You know, okay. a lot of a lot of fog. Uh, I grew up in a neighborhood where, first of all, my family's all from Mississippi. 
Ah, uh, okay. So Jackson, you know, my parents were oh, born Jackson. and raised in Jackson, Mississippi, you know, back when Martin Luther King was marching through. It was mm-hmm. like yeah. it was a that time back in the sixties, the fifties, uh, it was it was different. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't want me and my brother and my sister growing up in that. So they moved to Chicago. My oh. brother was born. They left Chicago and moved to San Francisco, and that's where me and my sister were born. Right. They just didn't want us to be, like a lot of people from uh, Mississippi went to Chicago because that's where the work was, like right. around that time. Oh, yeah. And they just wanted to get far away from everything they, were, you know, grew up in and were subjected to. Yeah. yeah. So San Francisco, all my neighbors were different ethnicities. Uh-huh. Like every house, it was, it was Tongan, Filipino, white, black, Latin, right. Indian, whatever it was. So that's what I grew up around. And... Um, I went away to college, and it was a predominantly black college. Mm-hmm. So that was new for me. And I wanted to, you know, I, wa- I wanted to experience that, to right, be around right. my people. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was, it was great. And I learned a lot from. Yeah, it was. It was. It was I don't know. If it was a shock because every summer we went back to Mississippi for. Oh, like, that's what I want to okay, know. Yeah. How were summers in Mississippi? It was different. Family? That's what the culture shock was. Mm-hmm. That's where the you see the segregation and right. you see how you know it's just the way of life there. It wasn't mm-hmm. like. We're doing this because we don't like them. They just weren't familiar. That was their box, and that's what they lived in. Mm-hmm. You can go 12 blocks. Like, I can go a whole week without seeing a white person, you know, growing up in Mississippi. And I mm-hmm. was like, wow. This right. is strange. That's different. Yeah. In the country. Yeah, it was country. Then what did your, your country cousin say about you? They call me Hollywood. <laughs> Oh, oh, they spoke it into existence. Yeah, Thank you. Like, hey, no we, family. We're going to move to L.A., man. We want to get into that acting game. How long, about a year? Think it take about a, like, it's going to take longer than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to take longer than that. But, it, you know, they call me Hollywood and whatever. It's, it all, perception. it right, yeah. it's all perception. Speaking it's all perception. Speak yourself in, into existence. You better take that. Yeah. Definitely. Well, wait, wait a minute. So you're, you're, bo- you're in San Fran. Were you there around the time the whole uh, Black Panther stuff was going on in Oakland? No, that was before my time. Okay. That was like early 70s. Was it? Oh, I okay. want to say that was like early. We, I was, you know, well, I ain't think my age. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> you just weren't around. I wasn't around in the early around. 70s. Was, it, was there still some feel of that when in your city, or was it really more like, okay, that was before us and we don't really do There were areas. Okay. Like when we first, uh, like, this is before I could remember, but like my first year or two was in Hunter's Point in the Bay. Okay. And that was a predominantly black area. And that there was a feel of that around there. My parents kind of saw that going on, so they moved us to the South Side. Mm-hmm. South you have some good parents. Yeah, okay. they, they sacrificed so much for me, and my brother, and my sister, so we wouldn't, you know, we have it better than they did. Right. And that's why you, you look at life now, and you look at how you approach life. They did too much for us to be out in the clubs and wilding out, and just not, you know, being able to give back and do mm-hmm. the things that they wanted us to do. But that's a whole other story or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm right, appreciative. Right. Yeah, let's talk about, um, so growing up, we heard that you sang, you danced. And did some break dancing. Yes. I was a break dancer. <laughs> you, rapped, you rapped as well. I rapped, yeah, a little bit. I got yeah, a few little names. bars, I got, right? I was, I was good for a few bars here and there. It's been <laughs> okay, a let, me, let me hear something. See, you put me on the spot. We got it. Okay. I don't have any of my this music. This beat. I got. I know. I just love looking. I, I just need a little sample. Let's, let's sample somebody someone else's, else's stuff. stuff. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. We need Put a beat. Alexis, hook us up with a beat. Lamonica's gonna rap for us. What my favorite rapper? Favorite rapper is Red Man. So what's a Red Man? Red Man. I can look one up. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Alexis, <laughs> Alexis, I love you. She's so but, awesome. You trying to okay well, well, corral with Doc and Met the Cow? Boss saloon fight without weapons out. Stretch mark like bellies on Kevin Lyles. One yard to score. Only second down. Hoes play wifey. Wanna settle down? Trying to lock. Cash, bitch, better buy. Lamonica, Lamonica on the mic. I would have been nice. Right. I would have been nice. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's not too late. It's not too late. So then, why, why acting out of all of these talents? Why did you choose acting? Mm-hmm. It's just being able to tell stories and just move people with storytelling is just. It's it's the best. You could affect people. Mm-hmm. You know, there's stuff that needs to be said that music you could tell it, right. but you know, music for me, I was better rapping other people's songs, put it that way. Okay. Mm-hmm. But telling You're a cover story. rapper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, 90s cover rap. I might, <laughs> that might be something I might want to get into. Yeah, that might, you might have a career in that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, acting is just, I love, I'm a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. Good. Yeah. Now you went to Central State University. Yeah. What was that like? And would you ever go to another school? How, how would it have been different if you went somewhere else? I think Central was good for me at that point in my life. Um... I think about other colleges I could have went to. I had a scholarship to Central, play mm-hmm. football. 
And when I first got out there, I spent my whole life on the West Coast. Right. So when I got out there, it was summer. We had to be there a month before school started. So it was the, it was like the dead of August. Hot. This is Wilberforce, oh. Ohio. Right? Yeah, Wilberforce. Right, right, right. It was hot and muggy. I'm like, what <laughs> the know, hell did I'm I surprised. get into? Yeah, Ohio. Before the students even got there, I was like calling my parents like, all right, now what other scholarship offers do you have? <laughs> is it too late for me to turn this thing around right. and, and go to another school? But I'm like, let me stick it out. Let me, you know, and I'm glad I did. Uh-huh. But I can't. I, I really can't imagine going anywhere else. Right. Would you ever do anything different at Central? Like your college experience, you think back like, man, I could have did this or man, I could have... Um, not did that. I got no regrets about Central. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I got no regrets. My college life was, was fun. Fantastic. I still keep in touch with a lot of those guys. Good. Uh, football experience was great. Mm-hmm. Let's see yeah. a football tab that I see. I know. Let's on this yeah, right that, arm was, of uh, that was the whole team went out one year. And, Let me see. And got, Let me see. Is that number nine? Yeah, football number nine. And then, like, shortly after, went out and got what is this? Panther clawing through the skin. Oh, you were a diehard. Hey, we did it. We did it. I'm not going to be the one saying, I'm not getting a tattoo. <laughs> this the way the train moving? Let's roll. That was right, like right. our fraternity back then. Right, right. Good. Right. So I know you left um, college early to pursue your NFL career. Yeah. What made you go, the NFL's not for me, acting is? Well, I would have stayed another year at Central State and played football, mm-hmm. but they got rid of the football program. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Right? They, it was something with the president at the time, got caught stealing money, so they had to make, like, cuts and budgets, and oh, the football no. team got dissolved. So what? it was like, damn. Right. But, uh, you know, I had a good year, and the year before, uh, Hugh Douglas came out, the uh, football player played for the Eagles, and he, he was drafted, like, maybe 12 or 13 overall. He was defensive rookie of the year, killed it. Like, he just, Man. after he left... And had a good year that yet, you know, his his rookie year. Our pro day, we had Bill Belichick, Marty uh, Schott, like we had yeah. half the NFL at the pro day. So I got a good look. Yeah. I got a good look. A lot, you know, a couple guys went, played a little further, but NFL's rough. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I had someone asked me like, what's harder, acting or the NFL? And I was thinking like it's a hard question. NFL is like one percent of college, you know, athletes right. go. But you have in acting you have time to get better mm-hmm. like if I'm not good now five years from now I'll be better ten years from now like Morgan Freeman didn't get his first starring role till he was 54 right. you know? there's growth in this industry yeah there's growth in the industry the NFL if you don't hit right when you get out right yeah, you might be working at LA Fitness next week <laughs> stop I mean, it is, it is <laughs> no, what it that's is a, no I it's know, reality I know that that's happened to some a few yeah players. that's horrible that was, that's I mean, when, when yeah. it didn't work out for me I was at Bally's personal training <laughs> So I'm speaking from experience. Right, <laughs> That's what right. I wanted to talk This was in L.A. Yeah. Okay, so you moved out here. What were your other side jobs that you had to experience? we all been through it. I've had two jobs uh, in my life. Like, Bally's was one of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was short-lived. And I worked at FedEx. Okay. So and FedEx was like, you know, you see there's careers at FedEx. Like, them people right. get to FedEx, and, you know, you got benefits, you got right, health, right. dental, you got all that stuff going on. They got right. families. Mm-hmm. And I got there, and I'm like, this is cool for now, but I don't see, like, you know, long term. These guys been around forever, and I see my, this is short-lived for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And, Were uh, you a delivery guy? I was a delivery dude. Did you mess up on some deliveries? Because I had someone do that to me yesterday. No, no. <laughs> okay. I can't speak for my you. FedEx brothers, but <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> I was on point. Ten thirty call time. Okay, right. I right. was there. Okay. My, my, you know my whole route was on um was on the Warner Brothers lot. Ah, so I had a little truck okay. and I'm rolling around Warner Brothers and it's funny, there's um another host uh for Black Hollywood Live, Diane Valentine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was an executive at Warner Brothers back then and I used to deliver packages to her. Oh wow. And I used to sit in her office like my whole break and we used to <laughs> chop it up. Man. And when she left to pursue her thing and she was like, You gotta go pursue your thing and I was like, You right, you right, like you know, we pump each other up. And 9-11 happened mm-hmm. back okay. then. And they got rid of my route. So they had me at the station, gave me some love. With live, make sure you check that out. Look at you, like, now, full circle. Y'all Black Hollywood Live today. Full She's circle. got a show on Black Hollywood Live. How hilarious That's is that? That's so amazing. Yeah. See, so look at this. Look at y'all. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, so you starred as Luke Rogers on the game, which I saw you. And I was like, oh, he's cute. Yeah. Who is that? Okay, yeah, was, over there with Warren Lennon, you you messed her up with yeah. her blue blue. It's okay. You did yeah, a good job. That was a good time. I like Atlanta. Shout yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. was it? So what, when you saw yourself on TV, what was what was your first thought? Like the first time you saw yourself on like, TV? Damn, I'm big. I'm big, big. <laughs> what? 
I mean, you, I'm a big dude. In right, Hollywood, right. it's like camera puts that weight on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not as big as I used to be. When I played football, I was like 235. You were just cock swallowed. Really? A linebacker. Like, no right? Ram man <laughs> having back in the day. Like, I was huge. And now it's, it's leaned up. I'm still a big dude, mm-hmm. especially in Hollywood terms. But, you know, I embrace it now. And, uh-huh. you know, I was trying to lose all this weight. I'm like, you know what? That's not me. Right. Mm-hmm. I got to be who I am. If I'm a little bigger, I might not get that job. But whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. How was it like that on that set, though? It was great. Yeah. yeah. First day on set, like, my first scene, they shoot out of order. Like, they block shoot. So they might shoot this episode here and this scene here. Like, it's you just got to keep track. Mm-hmm. Right. And my first scene, first day meeting everybody, I'm pretty much with my draws on with a towel around. We shot the scene where Blue oh, came to yeah. the door. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? You know, like, <laughs> I'm behind her. I'm like, hey, everybody. You know, nice to meet everyone. I'm sitting here butt-ass right. naked. Yeah. No. We do the That's recap amazing. for the game. So we're obsessed yeah, with yeah, that show. So we, we've seen every episode. So, yeah. yeah, we saw you. Yeah, that was yeah, a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about Sons of Anarchy because that is a huge so- mm-hmm. show. What is it like to be on such a popular show? That show was amazing. Like, that did wonders for my career, just being around those actors and that caliber of, right. of talent. It was, um, that was pretty much the, the show that opened a lot of doors for me. Like those rooms, those casting rooms you couldn't really get in before. Mm-hmm. You're unknown. You don't have a lot of credits. I'm pretty much, I didn't really get into acting, acting until 2009. Mm-hmm. So it was, I'm new to the game. So when I got Sons, that was like, oh, okay. You know, this guy, Sons of Anarchy. And at the time, it was a big show. Yeah. But I think over the course of season five and six, like, it just got bigger and bigger. Right. You know, and, like, with Netflix around that time, it was getting, Netflix was, like, having more teeth in the game where you can go back and catch up to old episodes where back in the day, if you didn't watch the first two seasons or something, it's like, I'm I'm out of it. Right. But people were able to catch up on Netflix, so you had a whole new audience coming. Right. And it just, you know, just started snowballing. And by the end of the, the seventh season, it was, like, one of the biggest shows ever on TV. And I didn't realize the magnitude of it until, like, after the fact when people recognized me and they come up like, that's my favorite show of all time. Oh. I'm like, word? Yeah. yeah that's, it was look a good at that, show. that binge watching culture did you good. <laughs> like I look at I look at how what affected me as far as television was the wire. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. wire was like one of those like right. whoever was a part of the wire, them dudes was them dudes. Like And you still remember all the characters right. in the wire. Yeah. I feel like, ah, like he was on the wire. No matter right, what they right, do right. now, he was on the wire. Mm-hmm. Right. So Sons, and you see those guys on Sons now, they're branching off doing all their other stuff. So mm-hmm. maybe, you know, that show for me and all all the guys that were on there, it's like that was the bond, and now they go out and do big things. And how I look at the wire, you know, actors or people in the future look like, yeah, those are people from Sons. They all right. did Sons together. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it was. It changed, changed, changed my career. And I know you just starred opposite Craig Robinson in his NBC show, Mr. Robinson. Yeah. That was fun. Do you feel like you're more of a comedic actor or a dramatic actor? I think dramatic. Okay. Yeah, comedic. It's it's fun. The comedy. You show up on set. It's real lighthearted. We're joking around. You know, you do a whole lot of stuff. And um, comedy's fun. It's new to me. Right. Like the last couple of years, I've been doing more comedy stuff. But mm-hmm. dramedy is what you know. I'm, I gravitate to dramedy a lot more than than comedies. Okay. Yeah. Is it because of the improv aspect, or you just specifically love drama Dramas, a little more? I, the no, story, the the comedy. You're saying you like uh, like I drama like, more than comedy. The storytelling, like the mm-hmm. stories that I think need to be told. Then dramas, that's where I want to be. That's your right. element. Yeah, that's Got the, it. I want to I wanna move people. Well, um, is there a role that you haven't had that you would love to play? There's a lot of roles I'd love to play. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where to start. Like, a, a Born Identity would be fun. Okay. Like, you know, Jason Bourne kind of role. I, I see myself as an action guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I look at The Rock at what he's doing. Dwayne Johnson, oh, like, yeah. that right. dude's changing the game. Like, he... You can't pigeonhole him. He might be over here, you know, playing a tooth fairy. (laughs) You know, and then another movie, he's over there just, you know, beating up lions and, you know, whatever it is. (laughs) Like, that's where I want my career to go. Like, Mm -hmm. you just Mm -hmm. might be doing comedy, might be doing drama, might be doing action. Who knows? Right. right, right. Right. Now, let's talk about your new show, Hot Wives of Las Vegas. Tell us about that. Adonis. (laughs) That show was so much fun to work on. Uh Those guys, that cast. Those a lot of those guys are the the UCB, mm-hmm. you know the Upright Citizens Brigade. So right, right, right. they're familiar with each other. They go from show to show. Like you might see a lot of shows where, oh, that's the guy from you know they all keep it tight. Right. So I'm the new guy, 
all mm-hmm. everyone knew each other, and it's the second season. And like, yeah, you know, like how'd you? Like, oh, I worked with Paul. Me and Paul did a movie together in uh, in New Orleans in January. Uh-huh. So I didn't know he was a producer. I knew him through his, through his acting. Like he's great, funny comedy. You know, he's a great guy. So he hit me up around around May. It was like, I got a role for you if you want to take it. You're like it's fun. I was like, who's a part of it? You know, let me see some some paperwork on it. Like, and I saw the cast. I saw Keegan Key. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. What? I saw Casey Wilson. I saw Timberly Hill. I'm like, I don't know what my role is going to be, but well, sign, sign me, me up. up. Yes. What time do we got to be there on Monday morning? Right. Yeah, so. Love it. And they just gave us the freedom to just play and just do so much. It's like, such it was a, a funny show. It's, it's, it's hilarious. It's and, hilarious. It's on Hulu, guys. Check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I yeah. wasn't familiar with the franchise. The first season, Hot Wise were Orlando. Mm-hmm. So when I got that, I went back and looked. I'm like, why isn't anyone talking about this? Right. This is hilarious, funny comedy. And the second season, I just I jumped in, and there was no out of bounds. Like, if I'm going too big, pull me back. Like, no, you're, you're not too big. Right, right. We're good. No, we love it. Like, yeah, and I was able good. to bring a lot of stuff to it. It was fun. Yeah, that's good. I saw, you know, I saw them do their, I think maybe three years ago, they had their play in L.A. And yeah. it was, I think it was the Hot Wives of... They might have done Orange County, and then they split off to do the Orlando and now yeah. the Vegas. So I'm like, where else? Are they're going to do, like, Montana or something. Who knows? Like, oh, it's oh, itself. You could end <laughs> right. up anywhere with that franchise and just create and have fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you're so busy. What kind of projects do you have upcoming? I uh, finished a movie not long ago, XOXO. Okay. It's a Netflix film with mm-hmm. uh, Sarah Hyland, um, Graham Phillips, Ryan Hansen. Like, really good cast. Mm-hmm. And it's the world of EDM, like the super DJs, those Vegas, those dudes make money. Yes, they like make Calvin a lot. Harris oh, and man. Steve Aoki and all those guys. Them dudes make real money. Right. Mm. Yeah. And like doing the research for the role, I was like, I I wasn't really familiar with the EDM world, mm-hmm. but it's it's big business. Like, oh it's yeah. Huge. yeah. Oh yeah. It's you always huge. see their faces on posters for like all of the, the yeah, Vegas, Vegas. Yeah, hotels. Yeah, Vegas Palace and right. like, them dudes get paid like fifty grand. A yeah. Bit. And a buddy of mine, he uh, he runs the uh, the entertainment like lifestyle division of Hard Rock Hotel out in Vegas. Mm-hmm. He says whenever Paulie D DJs there, they make like two and a half million dollars for the what? day. Whoa! They're guaranteed when his name comes. This is how much the you know, or maybe even more than that. That's crazy. Wow. And that's just one DJ, and that's you know, imagine like Calvin Harris coming to Wet Republic and MGM. Like, what? how much money are y'all making? Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. What about some other projects? I know you've got some stuff in the works. Uh, so. mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Um, what was it? Uh, Daddy's Home with Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. That'll be out Christmas Day. Okay. Yay. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. I, I did a, um, a short film. It's an AFI film. It's about a concussed football player trying to adapt to life after football. You know, right. he still thinks he's got a shot to make it, but no one's really being honest with him. Mm-hmm. And the events of a Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, it kind of, the life, you know, the tragedy plays it. out and... That'll be out in the film festival circuit next year, early next Good. year. Good. Yeah. yeah, you're busy. Well, you're it that way. I, I wish I was busier, but <laughs> I always wish you were, you were busier, I guess. Definitely. So how do you keep it balanced? Are you in a relationship? I am in a relationship. You're in a yeah. relationship. So I was going to ask you, how do you design your perfect woman? But what are the three qualities that your girlfriend holds that you love? Right. Great sense of humor. Okay. Great sense of humor. Um, family oriented. Mm-hmm. Because I could be all over the place. It's a good foundation, like a... A rock, right? You know, to come back to, and business minded, like just she she hustles. So I'm she a, can't be bad with finances. No, no, no. Good. my checkbook is our checkbook, so we gonna have to, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. make that happen. Make it right. work. Make it work. Now, before we get out of here, where can all of your fans find you on social media? I'm on Twitter. I just joined Instagram because okay. of the movie. They said we had to join Instagram. I'm late. I'm like you are very late. To the game. Uh, LaMonica Garrett at Instagram and LaMonica Garrett at, at Twitter. Okay, all yeah. around. Yeah. Keep it easy. Yes. Have you gone on to Snapchat or Periscope? But that's just a little Slow too down. much. <laughs> so I got a brother just got on Slow Instagram. Down. It's been a month. Of Instagram. I'm still trying. You can't I'm just tweet. messing with you. Yeah, people send you pictures on Instagram, or they they post a picture with you in it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't retweet this. I got to download. Oh, there's a new app. feature. No, there's repost? a new feature. What is that? You can re- I'll have to show you. All right, we'll talk. After, I'll have to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to update. Get the new, yeah. new update. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so, Wait, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go no, ahead. Before we, 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 we get out of here, There's you've gone through a lot. Your career has been amazing so far. There's so much more left to do. What advice would you give to people who want to do what you do? Uh, mm. I would say come out here. First thing you do is get in class. That's you got to focus on that craft. Get in class, stay in class, and be prepared for a marathon. 
And then once they're in it, what, how do you stay grounded in this? What I advice can you give? Just stay humble. Okay. Stay humble. I go to church every Sunday. I'm in yoga five, six days a week. Like I meditate. I I know there's a bigger power that I you know that controls everything. I stay grounded and treat people the way you want to be treated and. You know, live life, enjoy it. All right. Don't don't get in it for the money. Get in it because you love it. Right. Gotta money be passionate. Come. Yeah. You yeah. better say that, Lamonica. Say it. Say it. <laughs> 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 you guys, keep in touch with me at Tesnos on Twitter and Instagram. And if you didn't use it already, use that hashtag BHL next and let us know what you thought about LaMonica. He's yes. great. So you can find me, Megan Thomas, at Meg Scoop on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Periscope. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. We love you guys. Let us know who you want to see on this show because there's a ton of people we still have to talk to. Until next week, y'all. Bye. Bye. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host owner and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.